God, I hate recording things without a script. Hello, this is Stardom Star, and today I bring to you another tier ranking video. I am going to be ranking all 51 worldwide games from Clubhouse Games for the Nintendo Switch. I really love this game collection so much that I actually logged in over a hundred hours. <laughs> This is also the second time I've tried doing a Clubhouse Games tier ranking. My first time was done over the summer, but then I got very lazy to edit that video and my opinions changed, so I decided to do it all over again. And this was filmed right at the beginning of the year. So yeah, uh, let's get started already then. Alright, let's begin the ranking. So first up we have Six Ball Puzzle, which I'm gonna put in S tier because I really love it so much. It could be a bit more complex, but I'm satisfied for uh, how it is at this point. I really want to find more puzzle games of that nature to play in my free time, especially multiplayer puzzle games. Air Hockey. So I will put this in B tier, because I don't know, it's Air Hockey. Who doesn't love Air Hockey? It's nothing wrong with it, it's just... It doesn't really call my attention too much, but it's alright for what it is, especially if you're playing on touchscreen mode. And now this is Backgammon, and I'll also put this in B. It's not exactly my first game of choice, but I would choose it, like at some point during a long game session. Next is Battle Tanks, and I'll put this here. I'll also put uh, Team Tanks here as well because they feel underdeveloped for what they are and there are better games out there that do the things that these two games do. Maybe they're like this short on content because this is like 51 games, 52 games technically, so I don't know. I really liked uh, the Wii Tank game, the, the one on Wii Play. That was fun. It's such a shame that they didn't do anything like it. They, they didn't give it as much depth uh, for these two games, especially for Team Tanks. That feels like so light for what it could be, and th this doesn't even have online multiplayer, so... <laughs> Billiards. Billiards. Whatever. Uh, I'll put this into B. Not really my thing, but at the same time, I can't really think of anything wrong with them. Blackjack. Blackjack, I'm going to put under C. Yeah, I'm not a huge fan of the way Blackjack is done here. I still enjoy it, but like the fact that there's like five players technically, but the dealer is always a computer doesn't really sit right with me. Not the worst, but it's also not the best. It's still fun, but I don't know. They, part of it just has to do with um, the constraints of the game in general. Bowling, I'm also going to put here for similar reasons. It's not horrible, but the constraints that this game has, not letting any more than two players is frustrating and it doesn't make it as fun as it could be, especially if you have more than two people to play with. I mean, I never have more than- No, I'll, no, I'm going to cut that out. <laughs> Self-deprecating jokes are uh, out of fashion as of 2022. I can't- <laughs> So this is Karam. And I feel like I should put this on the same level as Billiards, but I kind of want to put this into A just because there's something about it that makes it feel more satisfying. Oh yeah, it feels more simpler. That's why I like it more than Billiards. I mean, Billiards also has a simple option, but I feel like I like this more because it's like a balance between strategy, but also simplicity. And this is Checkers. I'll put this into A. I've actually had experience with Checkers before, not in person, but like another virtual version of Checkers. I must have not remembered that you have to make a move when a move presents itself to you. That's not something I'm really used to. That's something I wish we could forego, but apparently that's like an actual rule. So that's what's keeping it from being an S for me. There's opportunities to be more strategic with that, but I haven't learned how to be strategic with that quite yet, so yeah. But I still enjoy checkers. Now chess is going to be put under me to play more. I, I've never played chess in general before. Apparently people in America know how to play chess, uh, but I do not know how to play chess. Uh, 
I've gotten weird looks for saying I've never played chess before. And I remember my father used to play chess a lot, so <laughs> I don't know. That's just me, I guess. So this is Nine Men's Morris, and it could go under B or C for me, but I think I'll put it under C just because it is a game that has been solved and i wish this game didn't include games that were solved just because like it kind of makes it less fun if you go against an experienced player <laughs> darts i played this very recently and i had a lot of fun with it uh but i'm going to put this under b i guess for similar reasons as bowling but maybe i'll move bowling to b yeah, I'll move bowling to B because I'm putting darts in B for the same reasons why I'm pulling bowling under B because the constraints. More than two people can play darts. Yeah, darts are very fun, especially when you learn how to play different rule sets. Dominoes. Now this goes under C or maybe B. I don't know. I think I'll put it under C because I don't like dominoes that much. <laughs> Like, it's a childhood classic. I played dominoes a lot, especially when I used to go to camp when I was very, very young. But, uh, it's not very fun for me. Especially since, like, there's, I guess, rules that I either forgot or have never played before. I only remember it was a game of getting rid of dice. Uh, dice. I, I only remember it as a game of getting rid of dominoes, but apparently there's, like, points involved in everything, and I don't remember having to keep track of points when I was a kid, so. Um... Uh... So next is Dots and Boxes. It's a very simple game. I'll put it under B. It's not really my favorite. I, in fact, I kind of dread it whenever someone is like, hey, why don't we play Dots and Boxes? Because it's like the most simple game for everyone to understand. But like for me, it's like there's so many other more engaging games. Now that I think about it, I'm going to put Dots and Boxes under C. There's so many more engaging games in this pack of 51 Worldwide Classics that, I don't know, that's far from the first one that I'd head over. Uh, Fishing, I am going to put under C. I remember when I made my first tier list for this, I was thinking, I think it, there's more to it than I uh, thought. But then I started playing it, and I don't know, it's not very engaging for me. I mean, I, I can see the fun in it, but it's not very engaging to me unless you're competing against someone. Four in a row. It's slightly more engaging to me than Dots and Boxes, so I'll put it under V. There's a, a lot more strategy. I feel like it's slightly more strategic, and it's slightly more entertaining for me. Golf. Uh, I'm actually going to put this under need to play more because I feel like I only played it to get the medals for the game. For me personally, I was never a fan of golf or sports in general, but like golf especially. But I feel like it could be fun if you're playing against someone else. Uh, but it's also such a shame that it's one of those two player only games. But yeah. So this one is Gomoku. Not to be confused with this other game. This one is Gomoku. And I'm going to put this under B because I've had a lot of fun with it. I've had a lot of fun playing against the computer. It's surprisingly hard to play against a computer. Like for me, it took me dozens of tries, dozens of undos and like hoping that like a computer caves in or something makes a mistake and I win. I find it really engaging and fun and I like it. Not not enough to be A tier, but I do like Gomoku. Hanafuda. I'm going to put this in B. I played more of it since the summer. I still need to learn the strategy a bit more. The game has like its highs and its lows for me. Sometimes I'm very lucky, sometimes I'm very unlucky and it's fun and I feel like if I were to be able to memorize the combinations, the card matching that you need to do, then it would be A tier for me. But for now, it'll be in B tier because I still have a lot to learn. But yeah, I really like it so far. Hare and Hounds. It's just, if, if you're the hare, then chances are y you're going to win. Like, 
if you're the hare and you know what you're doing, and I feel like most people who play this game know what they're doing, then you can just like stall it until it reaches 30 turns and then it defaults to either a tie or you winning. I don't know, but this should not have been a game included. They they should have picked something else. It's it's easily the worst game. Hex. I'll put Hex in B tier. I enjoy it. I feel like I could enjoy it a bit more. I I don't actually play this game a lot, but what I have played of it, I have enjoyed. It feels kind of even. Uh, it's just not my first choice, but I've enjoyed it. Hit and blow. This is going to S tier for me. I feel like it should really go into A tier because it's kind of been a bit compromised, especially when playing online multiplayer. Like one player isn't able to set the code and the other guesses, but I really enjoyed it and I really want an actual mastermind board game in the future. Con like solitaire. I'm going to put this in A tier because it's solitaire. You can't really go wrong with solitaire. It's not S tier for me because it's not a personal favorite, but I like it. It's basic, but it works. Last card. I will be putting it in S tier because I like it more than solitaire as a game. The one thing I just wish it would allow for more than four players and, and stuff. But yeah, I really like last card. It's a personal favorite. Ludo. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, I have very mixed feelings about Ludo because it's like one of the only actual four player options within this game. It's definitely not A tier, definitely not S tier, but sometimes I feel like on a good day it could be B tier. It could be B tier. Like if uh, this was before the update that fixed an issue where like it took forever to put a piece on the board if... I wonder if y'all can hear the dog right now. He's barking a lot. So anyways, before like the 1.1 update for this game released, if you had no pieces out, then it, you would have to skip, but then they fixed it so that by default, you're able to put one piece out, even if all of them have been sent to your home space already. Before that 1.1 update, I would have put it into like D tier or C tier. These games still take very long and they still can be very frustrating, especially since it feels like everyone's fate is in the hands of the dice and y you can only be so strategic without having more than one piece out on the board. But yeah, I have a love-hate relationship with that game. Mahjong Solitaire. S tier. This one has to go into S tier because like with Hit and Blow, uh, this game introduced me to Mahjong Solitaire and I love it so much that now I play uh, the Microsoft version of Mahjong Solitaire on my phone often. Uh, if um, anyone has like a better recommendation for Mahjong Solitaire, I would like to hear that. <laughs> But yes, Mahjong Solitaire, a revelation brought to you by Clubhouse Games. Mancala, I'm gonna put that into A tier. Kind of like with Dominoes, uh, it was a game that I played as a child in camps a lot. I have more of a soft spot in my heart for Mahjong. If I didn't have that soft spot, it would be in B tier for me. Like, there's nothing wrong with the game. It depends on who you're playing with, but yeah, I, I adore Mahjong. <laughs> I wonder if I still have a Mahjong board laying around. Probably not. You know what I just realized? This isn't Nine Men's Morris. This is Chinese Checkers. Let's just make that trade very quickly. This is Chinese Checkers. And I'll put it in B tier. It has a very strange distinction of being a game that you can play with up to three players. Not four, not two, but three. That's a very strange limit. Because it's an option that you can play with more than two players, it goes above C just because of that. I've enjoyed playing it, especially with three players. Matching. Goodness, that B section is really filling up. But I'll put matching here because there's nothing very functionally wrong with it. I feel like I have to revise this whole board. There are games in that section that are like, I like it, but it could be better. And then there are also other games in that section where it's like, I like it, it just doesn't call out to me. And I feel like there should be a better distinction for that. But anyways, yeah, it's, 
it's it's matching it's there there's nothing wrong with it it's just it's just very vanilla for me now uh this is mini shogi this is mini shogi and this along with big shogi and with mega shogi i'll put it in need to play more because like chess i know it's a very complicated game that i need to take my time to learn i really want to find someone to play it with who is also as an experience with them because i know uh you can make very good content out of that <laughs> piano i will put under c i feel like i shouldn't put it under c because they threw it in there as a bonus but there isn't a way to play it in docked mode but they don't tell you you should have it in a uh, tablet mode it does not function at all in docked mode so yeah it goes into c just because of that pig's tail i think i'll put that under i'll put it under c because it's a very forgettable game for me. I put it under need to play more, but I'm sure that if I were to play a round of it, I'd remember, oh, it's that's not very fun. Or, oh, so that's why I don't remember it. It's a game that's very much based on luck, and I feel like because of that, I don't really remember it. This game is like so far from a first choice, I forget it's in the game. President, I am going to put in eight here because I enjoy it very, very much. I feel like I could even put it into S tier, but uh, I'll leave it in A tier for now. I really need to learn strategies, better strategies for president, because I always try to do something like, okay, so I avoid first place until the fourth game, da 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 da. But then like, that strategy tends to screw me over more than it does handing me a victory. This is Mahjong Ricci or Ricci Mahjong. I forgot the order. Uh, thank you, Spanish language version. I will put this into need to play more. I'm actually planning on making a series where I actually learn how to play this game with Clubhouse games. Uh, so yeah, hopefully I fulfill that New Year's resolution, learning how to play Mahjong. Uh, yeah. Renegade. I... I'm going to put this into C rank. I really don't enjoy Renegade too much. It feels like a game that's very closely related to Gomoku, but Gomoku, maybe it's slightly more easier, or I don't know, like Renegade, you really need to be on the ball, it's even with like the normal computer, and it's, I'm not at that level. I really don't enjoy it that much. Sevens. I'm going to put Sevens in B tier. It's not the first game that I would play, but uh, it's there. It's an option. It's a valid option. So why not? <laughs> it, it can be fun trying to like screw every other player on the board, especially when you have like an eight or a six skipping every round just to see everyone squirm in their seats. But there, there has to be a point where you have to release a card. But after you release the card, you see, oh, are people still screwed? <laughs> now that I think about it, I'm going to put matching into C rank because it's there with this game, with Dots and Boxes. And I feel as about as much affection for Dots and Boxes as I do matching. Shooting Gallery. I will also put into C. It's one of those games that feels like you play it once and then you never need to play it again. I always get shocked whenever someone suggests for me to play it. Like if there were more variety in this game, then I would probably be more into it. Sliding puzzle. Uh, I think I'll... Mm, I don't want to put this into C because this is very much a single player experience. So I think I'll put this into need to play more. It's not really my favorite game, but it has an audience and I need to discover the joy that its audience feels. Kind of like golf but not really with golf. I feel like it's more like, there's more of a variety of experiences with this game than with golf. Slot cars, I'm going to put into C. Just because you can't play it online, it's probably too laggy for you to play online. If you are able to play it online, I probably would put it into B. Uh, wait, I'm looking up if there is a way for you to play with four players in slot cars. Doesn't look like there is. So it's going to be in C just because of that. The fact that you can only play with two players. 
when Mario Party, Mario Party Superstars, they also have a slot car mini game that you can play with four players. Then you can also play the slot car game online, so it's like they could have done better with this. Speed, I am going to put into B tier. I could put it into need to play more, but I think I'll put it into B tier because I feel like you can get a lot of enjoyment out of it if you're playing with someone who knows what they're doing. Because I played with people who are more inexperienced than I am, and I played with people who are more experienced. And yeah, I can understand why it might not be fun, but there's definitely some fun to be found. Spider Solitaire. I'm going to put into B tier because personally, I do not like it, especially how hard it is to get all the medals. <laughs> Takoyaki. I am going to put this. I could put it into C for similar reasons as Pig's Tale. It's a game that I forget is even in there. But I feel like it could easily be B tier, but I'll put it into C tier just because I don't have a super huge attachment to it. Texas Hold'em. I'm gonna put that in B tier. It's not a game I play very often, but I feel like there's less issues with it than with Blackjack. Baseball, I'm gonna put into C tier because it takes way too long sometimes. Especially if both players know what they're doing, it can take way too long. And unlike with Ludo, it's like mm, significantly more boring, less engaging. Because at least with Ludo, you have multiple players and like you can enjoy multiple people getting screwed over. <laughs> Toy boxing, I'm gonna put in. B tier or maybe C tier as well. No, I'll put it into B tier. I don't know. I need to find more people to play that one with. Toy curling. I'm going to put into A tier because I enjoy this game a lot. I wish I played it more often. <laughs> toy soccer. Uh, C tier. I really cannot get a hang of toy soccer. <laughs> toy tennis. Uh... It's slightly more enjoyable than these two options. Uh, just slightly. I feel like it's still C tier for me. I think I'll put Toy Tennis into B tier just because I do enjoy it a heck of a lot more than baseball. So yeah. <laughs> now this is War. War is another locked based game that I forget is actually in the game along with uh, these two other card games. So just because of that, it goes into C tier. And this last one is Yacht Dice. I could put it into S tier, but I recently played a version that had more than two players uh, be able to play it. Knowing that you could easily play with more than two players means that I have to demote it to A tier. Just because of the fact that it doesn't give you an option for more than two players. It's now an A tier for me. A for awesome, but not super. So after finishing the initial tier ranking, I thought something was off. And then it occurred to me that I was missing the F tier, the F tier reserved for hare and hounds. So of course I put it in. Then I decided to start re-sorting the old C and B tiers so that D tier can be dedicated to games that I thought had actual issues and C tier games could just be games that I just didn't click with but otherwise were probably fine. And then B tier was games that I liked, not A or S tier worthy but I still like them regardless. So yeah, here's the expansion of my tier ranking. I'll put toy soccer and toy baseball first because they don't have issues. They're just not my thing. And as well as dominoes. I'll also put these two. Piano has legitimate issues, so it has to stay there. Renegade, that's another game that doesn't really have issues other than me sucking at it. <laughs> and I guess... I could put Takoyaki here as well. It feels like there's enough strategy to differentiate it from the other two, like, locked base card games. Toy Tennis, I think I'll downgrade it to see. It really isn't my thing, and I, I guess I felt bad putting it into 
the old C rank, but now that there is a D rank, I don't feel too bad about it anymore. <laughs> I have three of like the five toy sports games in C rank. That's kind of, uh, okay. I guess I'll also put fishing into C rank. It's not like there's much wrong with it. There's just wasted potential in that fishing game. Why not Spider Solitaire as well? I mean, the issues that I have with Spider Solitaire, I feel like are present in any version of Spider Solitaire, so... <laughs> so yeah, I guess that's gonna be my Clubhouse Games tier list. <laughs> and that's all for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully y'all enjoyed that. I really, really like Clubhouse games, and uh, I really want to play more games like it. I want to find others to play more games like it. <laughs> and yes, this year I am planning on learning how to play Mahjong, Richie Mahjong, and hopefully I'll be able to achieve that goal in a relatively timely manner. I know that that's a very hard game, especially for someone like me with no knowledge of this kind of game. I'll find a way. I'll we'll try my best. But yeah, that's all for now. Ciao!